Hi YouTube, just thought I'd do a quick, well, might end up being a long video, but a video on all the analysis of the kit that I took on a recent walk. Um, there's loads of lessons learned, so I thought I'd record that for myself and for anybody else out there who wants to look at it. Um, I just got a pile of kit, I got several cameras going, so I'll flick between them and audio all synced up, so uh, let's see how this goes. Um, you can see I've got a pile of clothes. Uh, it's mainly clothing and stuff like that, not the actual gear. Uh, so we go through all of that because that's the main thing that failed. Um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is just grab stuff off the pile, go through it, what I've learned, what I'm going to change and what I'm going to keep. So uh, let's do that. Here we go. First thing, backpack. This is a great backpack. It's a Deuter. Let's get a close up. The Deuter Speedlight 20, 530 grams, very lightweight. It's not waterproof, it wasn't designed to be waterproof, but it is super light. I carry this every day. Um, I've been using this for about two years now, every single day, and it is getting worn and torn. So outside it looks great. Uh, and inside, you just start to see where the fabric's going, so you can see the linings coming off of here. Um, but that's okay, I'm going to reseal that with some seam sealer and do that. Um, so this leaked, but that's okay because it's not waterproof, I expected it to leak. So what I did was, um, in here somewhere, here we are, we've just got dry bags. Hang on. So these are just caramel dry bags, you buy them at uh, uh, Sports Direct, super cheap, like three or four pounds. Um, and they're really good. I haven't had one fail on me yet. I do know they do fail. Um, oh, we've got somebody looking. Hang on, I'll show you. I'm just being a bit nosy. Hello. <laughs> she wants to know what I'm doing. Right, so dry bags, really good. So I put that inside my day bag, in like that. Put all your gear in there, fold over the top, and it doesn't matter what happens to this. Um, all your stuff to stay dry and that worked a treat. So that's what I did for my day hike. Make sure everything I had was in the dry bag, not in that. So, um, so that's good. So dry bags, winner, buy those. I use them all the time. I put wet clothes in them to keep the wet away from my other kit. I put dry stuff in there. I put food in one, sealed it up to keep the smell out for animals and stuff like that. So yeah, loads and loads of uses for dry bags. So this one, yeah, really good. What I've done is it did get soaked through, like really soaked, like sodding wet. So I washed it in the washing machine, just a cycle of um, 30 degrees, uh, synthetics and a high spin. Um, and then I washed it with a waterproofer, uh, just to give it a little bit of water resistance from showers. Um, and that's, that's done the trick, it's lovely and dry and clean and the showers just shrug off it now. We'll talk a little bit about that in a, in a minute. So, good bag, I like that, keeping that, not going to change that, that's fine. Next thing up, um, keeping warm at night. I've always had trouble with cold feet in sleeping bags and quilts, in hammocks and in tents. Uh, always had a problem with that, but now that's now solved. So I've got these, I'll show you in a bit closer. So these are 100% wool, I think it's lamb's wool, you might be able to recognise what it is. So this is <laughs> an old wool jumper I bought from a charity shop, good quality, um, and I've cut the arms off um, and sewed up the end that you cut off, this end, just by hand, just sewed it up. So you end up with a nice long uh, wool sleeve. It's very warm, but it's very loose. And this is the key thing. It's got to be loose around your foot. It can go a bit tighter up your leg, um, but it's got to be loose around the foot. And that traps a layer of air around your foot and keeps you warm. And I'll tell you, ever since I've been wearing these, never had cold feet, ever. So these go with me everywhere. They pack up pretty small. Uh, two sleeves, two feet, <laughs> sandy. And uh, I just put them on at night, and no matter what I'm wearing, they're dry, warm, and uh, never had a problem. So these are a godsend. 
Um, so go out down your charity shop, find a local wall jumper. So that is feet, head. This is a, <laughs> it's a bit of a story and a mistake with this, but I'll tell you. This is a Ray Mears um, possum down a merino wool beanie. Love them. Had a few of them now. Absolutely amazing. Keeps you warm. Um, they dry out really fast if they get wet um, and keep you warm if you're wet. Um, but they're soft, they don't itch, um, and they're amazing. The problem is, look, why doesn't it go on my head? Because normally they go on easy. And the reason is I washed this on a 30 degree, 30 minute wash synthetic and it shrank. Um, so it was a lot smaller than this. I did some stuff to try and stretch it out, but it didn't work. Um, so don't put these in your washing machine. You've got to hand wash them, cool water, not for very long, and you dry them out flat. So yeah, they're quite a pain to maintain, but they are amazing. I'm going to buy another one because I love it so much. I'll just show you the detail. It's just really nice, fluffy, traps layers of air inside and out. Um, and they just work great, especially under a hood. Um, they work really great under a hood. So yeah, Ray Mears beanie is a winner. I will buy another one. I won't wash it in the washing machine. Um, and I've got to find a, a use for this now. I think it's too small for my kid's head. So uh, yeah, got to find out about that. I might make it into something. I don't know yet. <laughs> um, next thing, down jacket. Now. This is a bit of a mistake taking this. The reason I took it was to sit around at night in the cottage and when you're out of the weather and stuff and just sit around, it just keeps you warm and that worked brilliant. The mistake was taking it out on the walk. I didn't really need that level of insulation on the walk because once you're walking, you're warm anyway. All I needed was t-shirts, jumper and an outer shell. I didn't need any insulation really. So this wasn't very good. So this got soaked through because the coat failed. This is your Outkit filament uh, jacket, lovely jacket. This was washed on 40 degrees, I'd like to say. Yeah, 40 degrees, no, 30 degrees for 30 minutes, just a quick wash um, with some special stuff. And then straight in the tumble dryer, tumble dried, and it's absolutely like new. Everything's puffing up, all the downs puffed up. Uh, so that wash is really easy, easy to maintain, easy to keep clean. Um, just don't use it in very wet conditions, it, it's not a good idea. So good to keep you warm in the dry, not good out on a hike, it's just not, not ideal for that. So keep it, really good piece of kit, not ideal for how I used it. So that's that. So next thing, under layers. This is amazing. This is a Jack Pike. I'll show you. So this is a Jack Pike, very thin micro fleece. So it does keep you quite warm. It's pretty good. Uh, it's got like a texture to it. Very, very light, packs very, very small. Um, it's an over jumper. I washed all this with my down stuff and you get little bits of down everywhere. So you might want to wash your down stuff separate. <laughs> Another lesson learned. Um, but I've had this for years. It packs really small, very, very warm, and it's great out on a walk. So I think with that, under layers and an a outer shell is enough. You don't need any more than that, and that will keep you warm once you're going. If you stop, you start to get cold, but once you're going, you're absolutely fine. So this, big winner, had it for years, will always use it. Uh, Jack Pike, let's see if it's got a name, I don't think it has. No. It's not got a name unfortunately, so I don't know exactly what it's called. 100% polyester, but it's great. It, it's probably the fastest drying thing I have out of all the clothes I have. So if something gets wet, this dries pretty quick. That's that. Under that, I had this. I'm not too sure whether I'm gonna keep doing this. This is Regatta. 0.214 gear from Regatta. Good quality, high tech gear. So this is um, just a very thin uh, synthetic top. So it does keep you warm. It's very stretchy, very comfortable to wear. Uh, it doesn't dry very quick. It actually takes a long time to dry, which I was surprised about because it's thin. 
and light. I thought it'd dry really fast, but it doesn't. It takes ages to dry, so not very good on the drying side. But in terms of wearing, um, it's brilliant. Stops any chafing. Uh, it's just really good stuff and keeps you very warm. So I like this, I think, although it doesn't dry very fast, so I don't know. It doesn't smell like cotton and things like that, so it stays pretty fresh. It is a technical fabric, so it wicks away moisture from your skin very well. So yeah, I think overall I'll keep that and keep using that. Long sleeves is nice uh, to keep the warmth in. So there you go. Now, next layer down, my base layer, was Merino wool. This works very, very well. Um, now these, I'm gonna, these are also washed with my down kit, so they've got bits of down on everywhere, but I'm not bothered about it. But yeah, just wash it down separate in the future. So this is 100% Merino wool by Crane. Um, and it's just a base layer, wicks away from skin, keeps you fresh, keeps you warm. Uh, the leggings are very good, saves you wearing thick uh, insulated leggings, just these thin ones, tight fitting, keeps you very, very warm. So these were good. Um, again, soaked through, uh, didn't dry very fast. They're quite a long time to dry, so that's not ideal. Um, but in terms of warmth and weight and packability, very good. Now these, you can pay a lot of money for merino wool, it's like crazy amounts of money for merino wool. Um, but these I bought from Aldi, um, and I think they were like between eight and ten pound each. So they're pretty cheap. Or was it a pair? No, each. So yeah, between eight and ten pound for each one, which is cheap for merino wool. You can pay hundreds for merino wool. Um, but these are very good. I wear them sleeping. Um, wear them in the day if I need to uh, to keep warm in the day. So very good. Love that. We'll always use those. I only got one pack, that's all I need at the moment. Now, onto something that failed big time, but we're gonna explain that in a minute, and this is jacket. Now, I've always had good um, performance from this jacket. This is a regatta outdoors, worn it for a few years now, quite well worn. Um, it's high tech fabric, it's stretchy, it's 100% waterproof. They say on the label, it's not. Um, it soaked right through, every part of this was sodden, like many of the high spec uh, named brands that were out on the walk with me, they all soaked through. Um, but I don't think it's a problem with the product, I think it's a problem with the user, I think it's a user problem, and I'll explain that. So, this is a micro mesh single, well, probably two and a half layer fabric, it's got a membrane in it and all that kind of stuff, you know, sort of the late stuff. Really breathable, um, if you believe all that. Uh, I don't because the conditions we're in, breathability is completely useless. So let's talk about it a little bit. Let's bring you in. Here we go. So Regatta Outdoors, uh, this is the pen jacket, I think. It's really nice, it's got top pockets, it's got pit, pit zips. Uh, it's got brilliant herd turns with your head, it's light, packable and waterproof. Now, because this was sodden out, what's happening is, I think I've worked it out now, what's happening is you've got an um, inner layer, you've got a membrane layer, which is the one you can see through there, okay, and then you've got an outer layer, which is this, which is then coated. So what's happening is you've got a DWR, a, um, a water repellent coating on the surface of the fabric. Then it goes through to the membrane, then it goes through to the inside. Now, these, all these fabrics, all these coats from all makes are only breathable if the outside stays fairly dry because that's the only way moisture can move from the inside to the outside and then evaporate. If you've got a coat like this, and it's got a constant layer of water over the top, there's zero breathability, because the moisture can't get out, because there's moisture on the outside. If it's high winds and high rain, so not only have you got a layer, not only have you got a layer of moisture, you've also got um, pressure from the wind pushing that moisture into the fabric. This is the worst condition, and this is where these fail because there is no breathability, because you've got a layer of water on the outside, 
um, that water starts to penetrate, penetrate, penetrate until it gets to the membrane and eventually it will go through the membrane. The membrane won't stop it. It relies on capillary action and moisture going out and it will reverse if it's, if it's too much. So, these coats in heavy, heavy rain will only work, all manufacturers only work, if you have some kind of dryness or something on the outside. And the way they do that is through this water resistant coating. Now over time that coating wears off. It's not part of the fabric, it will wear off. Once it's wore off, when the rain hits it, if it doesn't bead up like little beads on your car when you've waxed your car, um, if it sits on the surface and starts to go into the top layer of fabric, that is when the problems start because it, the whole coat fails when that happens. And that's what happened on the, I looked at all the coats out there on the trip and that's what happened on all of them. Even um, an army Gore-Tex one that failed and one that didn't. The one that didn't fail, it was beading water right to the end. The one that did fail wasn't, it absorbed the water on the outer surface. So I think it's a user error. And the problem is, as you have these products, this surface wears off and we're a bit lazy and we don't replace the coating on the outside. So it doesn't bead anymore and if it doesn't bead this is going to fail so your whole premise of buying a coat like this is due to a very chemical resistance on the outside which is not ideal but that's the way it is so this will still survive very heavy storms and be waterproof in very heavy storms if this coating is is perfect and it has to be perfect so what i've done is just use a crane you can use nip wax i'm using grangers uh, which is, I think, is a bit better. Uh, it's a two-in-one, it cleans and proofs. So what I do is I wash it first, uh, 30 degrees or 40 degrees, um, do that. So it's all wet, clean. Uh, it needs to be wet, but it needs to be clean. So you do that first. Once that's done, I put two capfuls of Grangers in the washing machine with this and wash it again. And that then penetrates this liquid into all the fibres of this jacket. Okay, that's part of the story. Now. If you use Grangers, there's a second step. You have to put this in a tumble dryer with heat. And this is quite high heat. Now you have to make sure your coat is okay to go in the tumble dryer. Some are not, some will melt. Some things are not designed for it, but some of them are. So check on your label. If it's all right for the tumble dryer, great. Put it in there. Tumble dryer, not for very long because it dries pretty fast, to be honest. But then the heat, ensures that all those chemicals are bonded and goes into every single fibre on the surface and joins it up and you get a lovely water repellent surface. Now I don't know how long it's going to last. I've done it a few times and I've not really done proper testing so I don't know. But this now is waterproof. I've been out in the rain with it and it's been fine. Um, but every time it rains, every time you go out in the weather, a little bit of that coating comes off or wears off or washes away or whatever it is. So um, they have to be reproofed quite often, maybe even every trip, I don't know. So I've proofed it now uh, the best I can. I'm going to try it again on heavy weather, see what happens. I think it's going to be all right. And then I'm going to probably do a second trip heavy weather and see if it fails. If it fails, that means you should be proofing these coats every trip if you've got heavy weather. If not, it'd be all right. So I'm going to try that. I think that's the way around it. User error, not product error. Gore-Tex, thick fabric, not thin, but thick fabric, like thick Gore-Tex, will last a lot longer. The surface coating is a lot more durable and will last a lot longer. Same principle, different fabric, so it's just more robust. That's basically the view on the end of it. So bead in water, that's what you want. If these things are not going to work, I'm going to start using car waxes and things like that because I'm going to get this stuff super waterproof and uh, we'll see how that goes. Right, that's enough of the coat. Another thing I probably should have brought but didn't because it's not very easy to pack is just a normal fleece, a normal, normal polyester fleece material. Um, this is a Berghaus one, doesn't really matter what it is. If it is a bitterly cold walk, I would definitely use this instead of down. Um, because it keeps you warm even when it's wet. It's not going to wet out. It dries pretty fast um, It's just nice and cozy and warm. Uh, you might get too hot wearing this. So you've got to be careful It's got to be really cold for this, but I think this in the end is what what you need um, when you're out on a walk either this or um, Ideally you would want a wool layer in cold weather 
because wool's a lot more warmer, more rugged, not so packable, heavier, so you've got to do that trade-off. Um, but I think wool is the ideal. Um, but this is, uh, this is a good alternative, so we'll do that. Next thing that failed, waterproof trousers. These again are, I think they're regatta, aren't they? Yeah, these are regatta, again. Normal pull-on waterproof trousers, zipped legs, nice and long, covered over the boots. Perfect, didn't let any water in the boots. The boots are amazing. German para boots didn't leak. They were, they were incredible. I did treat them a lot before going out, but they didn't leak. So again, this failed, the reason it failed, not the fabric, the user, the, the DWR coating had gone, it saturated the outer layer and that eventually creeped through to the inner layer. I also waterproofed these in the Granger stuff to see how that works and I think that will help a lot. So again, I'll test these. If these don't work, I'm going to go to a thicker Gore-Tex, probably buy anyway, a Gore-Tex um, pair of uh, army surplus ones. Same technology, but thicker material, so it's just more robust. Chemicals seem to stay in it better. So, uh, do that. But overall, good trousers, I like them. I don't want to pay a lot for this kind of stuff. Next layer down on the trousers, hiking trousers. I like uh, crag hoppers. These are a particular model. Um, not going to give me the name, is it? No. Designed in the UK, crag hoppers. Um, the, the ones I like are these because they're stretchy. They really stretch. Um, let's have a closer look so you might recognise them. So these are the crag hoppers. Solar shield, good in the sun. Uh, UV protecting. But they're so stretchy, they're incredibly comfortable. Um, very lightweight, uh, lovely pockets. Got a pocket down the leg, which is great for cameras and gear and stuff, nice and big. Um, and these are just great, uh, back pocket, etc. Uh, they have got, um, the only thing they don't have, which I like, is zips on the bottom for your boots. But they've got um, a kicker guard to stop wearing on the back and all that kind of stuff. The trousers work really well. Um, I'll keep wearing these, I really love these. They did get wet. Um, but funnily enough, they did keep quite a lot of moisture away from my merino wool leggings and they were actually half dry by the time I finished. So um, yeah, these are pretty good. They get wet quick, but they do dry very fast too. So um, yeah, they were good. I'm gonna stick with those. Socks. Okay, I used a pair of uh, waterproof socks. So it's thick socks with a liner in it, some sort of liner, waterproof liner, like Gore-Tex or something like that, uh, that go on your feet. Now they, because I didn't know whether the boots would stay dry for that long eight hours in, a, in, in water, so, um, but they did, but I could feel the moisture, there was definitely moisture down there. Um, so the waterproof socks worked amazing. I had dry feet at the end of the walk, it, they were incredible. But if you haven't got waterproof socks, this is something else I do, guarantee no blisters ever. You get a nice thin pair of synthetic socks, okay? Thin. Um, synthetic so they don't um, get bacteria and things like that in, but they have to be thin. You wear those next to your skin. So put those on next to your skin. So just nice, thin, comfortable socks that fit well around your foot. Not baggy, they've got to fit well. So that goes next to your skin. Then, a pair of thick socks. You can wear what you like. It doesn't really matter. High-tech socks, cheap socks, they're all the same. They don't make any difference, really. Um, this is a pair of uh, army surplus socks that I wear a lot. I didn't wear on that trip, but I wear them a lot. They're nice and thick around the foot, um, which I like. But the main thing is they're long, so they go up your leg, up almost just below your knee, and that keeps a lot of warmth in, um, it's just comfortable to wear and I just like them. So yeah, long socks are good. Um, you wear those on top of the thin socks. Um, and they can be wool, they can be merino wool for warmth, um, anything you like, uh, just nice and thick to take up any gap in your boot and things like that. And what happens is you've got your foot and uh, the problem with blisters is um, friction on the skin. So you want to minimize friction. So coat your feet in 
athlete's foot powder, not for athlete's foot because it's um, slippery, absorbs moisture and keeps your feet fresh. Then put your thin sock on and that's a barrier, okay, then the outer sock. And what happens is if there is any friction in the boot, you get friction between the thick sock and the thin sock and that's where your friction happens and, and your movement happens. It doesn't happen between the thin sock and the foot. So you don't get any blisters and that's as simple as that. So if you don't want blisters, give that a try. It might work for you, it might work, it might not. But um, for me, it definitely works. That's the socks. Getting dry afterwards, um, I needed this. This really helped me a lot. This is pack towel, I'll show you. That's how you spell it, pack T-O-W-L. They are expensive. Um, I'm not going to say this is a cheap option for sure, um, but is amazing. So this will absorb up to 15 times its weight in water. Um, it swells up and it absorbs like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. I use it for drying off my tent because uh, it absorbs so fast. There is a lot of copies and a lot of things out there you can buy cheap, um, but nothing works as good as this, as the original pack towel. Um, so I used it to dry myself off, um, but you can use it for anything. It is absolutely fabulous stuff. Uh, I've got two. I've got this big one that I use for camping. Um, I've got... Um, I've got a small one that I have in the car for the car windscreen and things like that if I need it and other bits and pieces, yeah, pack towel, amazing bit of kit, um, we'll be keeping that, I still use it a lot, that's all good. And then finally, I didn't take this on the walk, but I think I should have done, this is the kind of coat that kept dry on that walk for someone that was out there, this is an army surplus thick Gore-Tex uh, hard shell, um, so there's nothing in it, no liners, no fancy pockets, a couple of pockets on it, but not much. Um, uh, wrist cuff stuff about it. Simple hood, not a great hood. Um, packs away though into the collar, um, and it's just a basic uh, Gore-Tex jacket. Now, let's have a look inside. So this is uh, tape seams. So if you're going to buy one, check all the seams. If there's any hanging off like this, then the chances are it's old and it's not going to work for you. I've got to stick those back down. But generally, it's all okay. So this will fail if the outer resistant, uh, water resistant coating is not um, good. So again, I washed it in Granger's, it's got a nice waxy surface now, I tried it outside, it's beading off, beading's the key element. If you're not beading, you're going to get wet basically. Um, but yeah, this is, um, this is good stuff. So I uh, might get another one of these because for me the arms are a little bit short in this one, really make sure you try them on. It's hard to order online because the fits are quite weird with these uh, military ones. So you need to try it in an army surplus shop and get, get the right fit. I uh, might get some Gore-Tex trousers to match uh, just because I like the heavy duty for in the woodland. Um, but yeah, take care of your stuff. Do that coating on the outside. It makes all the difference. It could mean the difference between success and failure on a trip. So that's all my kit now, uh, all the lessons I learned, what I'm keeping, what I'm going to change, what I'm going to buy. Haven't sorted out gloves yet, really need to sort out waterproof gloves. Tried a few things, not working yet, so I'm still yet to find the perfect uh, totally waterproof glove. Um, and I'll let you know how that goes. Just a little tip for washing your gear, I've discovered this stuff. Uh, I don't know if you have it in your country or maybe you've got something similar, I don't know. It's called Halo. Uh, it's called Sports Wash, Proactive Sports Wash. And this stuff's really good for outdoor gear because it's got um, stuff in it which kills um, bacteria and it's antifungal as well. So anything on your kit, it will just kill it all and keep it all fresh. It smells good, it's specific to sweat and odours. Um, it's designed for sports kit, um, so it's ideal for outdoor kit. So um, yeah, Halo, Proactive Sports Wash. Uh, if you can get hold of that, works really, really well. Use it for my kit. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope it helped you. Um, it's certainly a record for me to look back and see what's going on. 
Um, so thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next vid. Cheers, bye.